In this video, we're going to ask the question, is Solana heading to 135.54 before it goes to 360 and 60 cents? If you'd like to check out the video on the channel, this is a follow-up to Solana to drop before rallying, where I discuss the foundations of this fractal that we're going to go through, and I'm going to give you an update on how we're going so far. When the Spot Bitcoin ETF was approved, just by way of a little bit of review, we saw Solana come down 25.13% across 13 days, and then it rallied 166% across 55 days. From the time that the ETH Spot ETF was approved on the 23rd of May, if we saw the same kind of behavior, that would have brought it down to 135 and 54, but rallied it up to 360 and 60 cents. If you want to see content that you won't find on any other YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe and while you're at it, please smash that like button. We really appreciate it. So the question is, how are we going? How is this fractal turning out in practice? The really interesting thing about fractals, and I've just zoomed in on price behavior, you can see the fractal had been playing in rather well. We got a bit of a divergence, then it's back to the fractal. Now the question is, do we believe that Solana is coming down to 135.54? The answer to that question, it all depends on the main markets. It depends on the US 2-year, the US 10-year, the DXY. The next FOMC meeting is coming up in 17 hours. The markets have staged a bit of a breather because the probability of a rate ease yesterday was 0.7%. It's gone up to 4.7%. This takes pressure off the yields, off the 2-year and the 10-year, and puts positive momentum into bond prices, the major stock market indices, and of course Bitcoin. If Bitcoin is going up, hey, guess what? Solana is going up with it. This is a really positive sign to get an ease out just before the FOMC. Literally, in the past eight hours, the past 10 hours, it was literally 0% probability of an ease. As far as interest rate hikes go, it looks like we're going to get one in November, potentially one in December. We'll keep our eyes on this. If you're trading and investing in Solana, it pays to keep your eye on the major indices. Here the blue line is Bitcoin, the purple line is Solana, and this is the S&P 500. You can see as the S&P 500 came up, what did Solana do? It came up, and Bitcoin came up as well. And when it comes down, they both come down. When it goes up, they go up. And when it comes down, they go down. You can see it also playing out on the NASDAQ. And we can see a little bit of a divergence here as well at the current time. With the Dow, what do we see? If the Dow's going up, Bitcoin and Solana are going up. When the Dow starts to retrace, that throws negative momentum inside the crypto space. When it comes up, what are they doing? When it goes down, what are they doing? Pretty interesting stuff, isn't it? And this is how you need to look at financial markets. So many people look at financial markets as though they are a casino, a place to gamble. You don't want to gamble with your money. You want to win. The way that you win is through superior knowledge. The more knowledge you have and the higher quality that knowledge, the more that you will win over time. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't know the rules of financial markets. One of the rules inside the crypto market, when Bitcoin is coming down, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. You can see it playing out here. And here's our beloved Solana going down as Bitcoin comes down. But guess what? As Bitcoin retraces and goes up, it will come up and it will go up much more than what Bitcoin goes up. And here you can see XRP, Dogecoin. You can see all the alts cannot escape Bitcoin's gravity, and neither can Solana. Therefore, to understand where Solana's price chart is going, we need to understand where Bitcoin is going. You can see this negative fresh air gap here. And what happens in negative fresh air gaps? There's literally no structural support, so price can come down rather quickly. And this is just a lead up to the next FOMC meeting minutes, the CPI data, and all sorts of things that are happening inside the main market. Remember, Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity. And you saw what happened to Bitcoin. If Bitcoin is coming down, Solana is coming down even more so. And the major indices are in all likelihood retracing, especially the Dow and the 
the Russells. So we're keeping our eyes on those. But even though Bitcoin came down, it came through these very heavy levels of structural support at 67,000 and 66,846. They are not brick walls, they're safety nets. So we can go through, find a lower level and rebound. Now what we want to see is that 67,000 level retested and confirmed as support and a move upwards. If that happens, Solana's on the path to recovery. But if we don't see that, if we see a retest, what I call an underside retest of that 66,846 level, we'll have negative price momentum and that will open up lower levels on Solana. Don't forget that these are structural resistance and structural support levels and they're created through standards based processes, both level one and level two standard certification. They're not just random lines drawn on a screen. Each specific chart has its own DNA when it comes to structural resistance and structural support levels. Kate and I would like to express our deepest gratitude to you for tuning in and for being part of this incredible global family. Your support, enthusiasm and dedication mean the world to us. It's truly an honor to share this journey with such an amazing group of people who are committed to being more of a financial and emotional blessing to themselves and those they love through trading and investing. We can see Solana itself had a tremendous amount of trouble at that 170 structural one support level, then a negative fresh air gap down to the 157 level. It couldn't hold it and confirm as support, which pushed it down to the 147. It's very simple how things go with structural levels. If you can't get above, you're going to the one below. If you can't confirm that as support and have concerted positive momentum, you're going to the ones below. And if you have negative fresh air gaps, you may need multiple structural supports to actually capture price. Now, when we look at this, this is a little bit weak because it's just rejected that 150. It's coming literally down to the 147. But that doesn't mean it can't turn around especially if Bitcoin does. We can see that the 135.54 level could be opened up if we get an underside retest of that 147 mark and then just ping through the 136 because there's a bit of a negative fresh air gap here. It could literally hit that target of 135.54. I have personally tripwire trades inside the market on Solana just waiting for these juicy, juicy figures. The reasoning and logic behind doing fractals, even though price can come down, it can be explosive to the upside as well. All fractals do is basically say this happened in the past. It's not necessarily going to happen in the future. For that, we need to look at structural support and structural resistance levels. They're the key because price is always bounding between structural support and resistance and vice versa. I hope you found this video useful. And if you'd like to learn the standards how to draw these lines up, it's available from ctksmethod.org. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends, and Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again in the next video. Bye for now.